Welcome to our beginner series for V-Ray for 3DS Max. Today we'll take a look at how to adjust your white balance and exposure, and how to add some realistic camera effects to your images. To get the most out of this video, click on the link in the description to download our project files. This way, you can practice along in your own time. Now, let's jump in. I have a model of a room with some materials open. To light the room, we're using a V-Ray Sun and V-Ray Sky. Currently, we don't have a camera and are looking through a perspective viewport. Make sure we're looking from the perspective view and the viewpoint is roughly what we need. Let's create the V-Ray camera by navigating to the V-Ray toolbar and clicking on the camera icon. When we do that, the name at the top of our screen changes from Perspective to V-Ray Cam 001. By pressing Shift and the F key at the same time, we can turn on the safe frame which lets us see what our image will look like when we render it. Now we can play around with the camera settings. There are a few types of cameras, but the still camera is suitable in most cases. We can change the target or focus distance, and if we want, we can override the 3DS Max resolution for a specific camera, and this will be visible in the viewport as well. There are proportion guides to help us fine tune our composition, we have different grids and the golden ratio rule that we can adjust for the lower left corner. We can adjust the sensor and aperture on our camera, just like on a real camera. The settings for the depth of field and motion blur are below and beneath them are the exposure mode and values. There are also options to tilt and shift the camera lens or we can use the auto setting to straighten the vertical lines. This is mostly used for architectural photography. There are other specific settings, like bokeh for depth of field and distortions for the lens. We can also get rid of close objects that block our view with the near clipping plane. By clicking the toolbar icon, we can open the V-Ray camera lister to quickly access the most used camera settings we can change the field of view, film speed or ISO, F number, shutter speed, depth of field, motion blur switches, exposure, and white balance. We can play around with our camera's view to get a wider look at the room or to better match the golden ratio guide. As you'll see, it focuses on a corner where we have some interesting props and where the sunlight hits. Let's start an IPR rendering to check the light and exposure. It's a bit dark right now, so we'll need to adjust the camera's exposure. If you're comfortable with camera settings, you can use the same ones as in real life cameras like shutter speed and F number. In our case, we'll switch the exposure mode from physical to exposure value. This is a bit simpler because if you increase the exposure value, the image becomes darker and vice versa. So we'll make it a bit brighter with a value of 10. Now let's cool down our image because it's too orange. We can fix this by changing the white balance. We can use presets or adjust the custom color or temperature. Using D75 will make it even warmer but if we switch to D50, it will make the whites in our image neutral white. We can see this update in real time in the IPR. If you're unsure of the result, you can use the auto settings in the render settings dialog in the camera rollout. We can turn on auto exposure and auto white balance to see how they change our render. These auto settings are super handy when testing different lighting setups or HDRIs and animations. If we like the changes, we can save these settings to the camera. Let's check what has changed in our camera settings. We'll see that the exposure value and white balance temperature value have changed. For simplicity, let's round these values to the nearest whole number. Now that we're happy with the exposure and color, we can add some effects like depth of field. 
Let's look through our camera that we have in the scene that needs some depth of field. I'll turn on depth of field in the camera lister for our close detail camera. With the default settings, we don't really see the blur effect. So let's make the F number 2 to make it more noticeable. The focus is currently on the door in the background, which is a bit odd because we want to highlight the bottles in the foreground. We can change the focus directly from the frame buffer by right-clicking and choosing Set Focus. I'll click on the left bottle, and the focus will adjust automatically. Now, let's add a motion blur effect. We'll need this on a camera that's focused on the ladder that's animated to roll along a rail. We want to show that it can move. To make this effect noticeable, we'll need to turn it on in the camera lister. We'll also need to adjust the shutter speed. Making it slower will increase the motion blur. Let's try with a value of 100. Now our ladder seems to be moving as fast as Lightning McQueen from Cars. Now let's render our room from the first camera view and push our image to look even more real. Usually, when we have a really bright light source like the sun, there's a bit of glow where the sunlight hits. To make this happen in our image, we can enable the lens effects layer. We have a glowing sun effect. We'll need to adjust the intensity and size of the glow and add some lens dust for an extra touch of reality. We also have a nice chandelier. It would be a waste not to show it off. Let's open the V-Ray light lister that lists all our lights. And let's turn off the sun because, well, why would we need it if we have chandelier lights? Let's turn on the small V-Ray sphere lights on the chandelier. Immediately, we get a softly lit room with flares on the light bulbs. We can make them fancier by adding lens dust or streaks. And voila, our room looks like it's ready for a fancy dinner. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos from our beginner series, or our blog and documentation for more tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you soon!